All right. So connecting a leadership training with John. It was actually my first leadership training, just so you guys know. Um, Y'all know me for trading and teaching trading and and some other stuff, but this is the actual first leadership training. So uh, this is either going to be juicy or it's going to flop. So we're going to we're going to go with it. All right. Uh, So I got some book recommendations right off the rip. Okay. Starting off with these three, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Great book. It's probably one of the oldest books ever written, (laughs) but uh, it's timeless. All right. If you've never read it, you need to, especially as a leader. The one that I just finished this week, the one that I binged yesterday for like eight hours. It was that one and another one. Uh, John C. Maxwell, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. I've been reading so many of his books. This is actually one that Gustavo mentioned um, to me, said that it changed his life. So I read it and it's pretty phenomenal. And a lot of what you guys are going to go through today in this presentation was derived from Everyone Communicates, Few Connect by John Maxwell. And also by John Maxwell, The Daily Reader. I mentioned this in the past, but I wanted to make this one a point because, and I actually have it right here at my, at my desk. So it's ready at all times. Hopefully you guys can see that in the camera. Okay, the Maxwell Daily Reader. So it's like 365 days of insight, whatever, whatever. You know, it's like short. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that. It's just one pagers. Okay, so it's like simple little notes, anecdotes or whatever. So that way you can get value every single day. And I know that if you can get value every single day, that as leaders, we can give value every single day. Okay. So that's kind of the purpose of that. And it's to keep us on our toes as well. All right. So starting off with the definition of connecting, uh, according to dictionary.com, connecting means to become joined, to have or establish a rapport or to establish a communications. The second one is John Maxwell's, which I prefer. He says that connecting is the ability to identify with people and relate to them in a way that increases your influence with them. John Maxwell also says that leadership is influence. These first, these first couple are very simple. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more complex. Um, and if you guys are driving or not wanting to take notes, it's fine. Cause again, I'm going to drop the, the PDF here in just a minute, but how do we connect to people predominantly is going to be one-on-one. So over 90% of the communication that we have is going to be one-on-one. And I'm sure that you guys who actually fucking leave your room, <laughs> probably experience a lot of one-on-one conversations. Okay. Uh, group, which is kind of like what we're in right now. There's, there's nine of us. So this is kind of more of a small setting or a group setting. And then the biggest one is going to be an audience. So that's going to be something like convention that's coming up. Uh, could be a house event as well, you know, given however many people, but uh, what we're actually going to go over today is, is more of the audience and more of like the social media. Because that's that's what I know more so than the others. It, well, you got to leave your room, Ivana, if you if you want to connect one on one. And since I'm in my room all day, one on one's not really <laughs> my forte. You know what I mean? All right. So this is the four main ways that we connect with everyone else, whether it's one on one group or an audience. Okay, visually, emotionally, intellectually and verbally. I'm going to give you guys some examples of how we do this and how you can do this better moving forward. All right. Uh, So here you go. Visually, we've got the the eyeball and the brain, mouth, and heart. Okay. It's just something very simple, very easy. You don't have to take a picture or anything, but it's just, this is how we connect to people. All right. So here are the qualities of a good connector. Um, Again, this is more of a discussion, but I'm going to give you this list. And I just really want you to think as we go through this list, is this what I do? So are you a good connector? These are the qualities of a good connector. Someone who is positive, someone who focuses on others, someone who smiles, okay? Laughter, facial expressions, they have positive and outgoing body language, uh, positive, calm tone of voice. I tend to get that a lot. And that's only because of the quality of the microphone and the settings and stuff that I have, but it helps. Okay. Humility, which is essentially admitting your mistakes and not appearing too perfect. 
um, someone who takes initiative. And we're going to talk a little bit more about both of those later on as well. Uh, here's a big one that makes other feel or makes others feel comfortable, excuse me. So if you're prospecting someone or if you're trying to connect with someone, if you don't make them feel comfortable, you're not going to connect with them. Okay. Um, confidence. Confidence is a huge one. You know, you got to know, obviously believe in yourself and believe in whatever it is that you're teaching or whatever it is you're showing. Okay. Asking questions, right? Good leaders ask great questions. That's another book by John Maxwell. Uh, well-informed and well-mannered. They convey respect and they genuinely, genuinely like people. Uh, good connectors also find common ground. Good connectors uh, practice transparency. Last but not least, they keep it simple. I tried to keep this presentation as simple as possible, but it is a lot of information. So um, there's only so much that I can simplify, but here it is. Okay, they keep it simple. All right, so here are some social media connections for your team. Okay, so this is you and your team interacting with each other. Okay, uh, this is something that Siva has called me out uh, in on the past as well as Zach. I know that I don't repost stories as much as I should. Um, so I'm working on that. I'm going to continue to work on that. Um, and again, this is how I know that, you know, we need help because all of us have our strengths and our weaknesses. Right. So reposting stories, uh, giving someone a shout out, right. Kind of the same way that I shout out you guys on here, but more so on social media. And public praise, uh, rank ups, funded accounts, uh, things of that nature. And, and most of you guys don't have an issue with this. I know because all of you are leaders, but again, just to put the information out there and what do these three things have in common? Really, it's the recognition okay people want to be recognized for um, their hard work for their contribution you know for whatever the case may be um the very last slide we're going to touch on this too and that's going to be really you know the the punch to the throat uh the last two slides because we're going to go over uh retention as well so uh this this has to do with it all right um i think every one of us in here knows what it feels like to be recognized but we also know what it feels like not to be recognized right recognition is awesome right it's great kind of tickles the ego a little bit like oh I've, i finally you know i'm shining a little bit it's awesome but when you do a lot of work or you feel like you should be recognized and you're not you feel ignored you feel like wow well, what the fuck you know why is you know nobody celebrating me or whatever the case right so here are some here are two quick and dirty examples of uh, what we can do, right? You could say something like, "I'm so proud of this person for this reason." Oh, I'm so happy because little Johnny got a hundred k funded account, or congratulations to little Johnny on the incredible accomplishment of funded account. Um, social media connection for people outside of your team, which is pretty much going to be the majority um, of of your followers on social media. Guys, if there was one point I wanted to make in this entire call, if there was one purpose for the reason for this call, it is this point right here. Okay. Answer your inbox and message requests. Stop ignoring your people. We just got done talking about recognition, not being recognized. Well, it's the same thing when you ignore people. I know this is a problem because I'm still waiting on people to check their inbox to get back to me. So if people are not getting back to educators, I know they're not getting back with prospects and people who have questions and people from their own team. I get messages all the time. Oh, John, thank you so much for responding. And no one else responds back to me. That is terrible. That is terrible. I should never have to hear that from a student ever, but I hear it all the time and it breaks my heart because I know what it feels like to be ignored and we're ignoring people. Okay. And that's not just I'm not speaking to you guys directly because I know the majority of you are good at this, but it's other people who are doing Zoom calls and stuff that may or not be on our team because I don't know who is and who's not. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter, but it's everybody. Okay. Everybody needs to not have a dozen requests, hundred requests in your inbox. Go through it, right? Stop saying, I'm going to get to you guys after the call is over. Fuck no, you're not because I've been waiting like three weeks and still haven't done it. Okay, so go ahead and just do that. 
you got uh, hopefully everyone here knows about feel felt and found you know for objections connecting with people you know stuff like that i don't think i need to go over that uh or form as well right finances or no um occupation recreation money and i forgot what the f1 is but i think you guys know what is the f1 could you guys tell me fam there we go family i appreciate that teamwork makes the dream work right on <laughs> okay so family occupation uh, recreation and money, I believe is the last one. When you're ignoring someone, you're ignoring another version of yourself. That's uh, that's a good one. Facts tell, stories sell. This is something that I've not only learned from uh, Vargas, but something that I've also learned on some of these books that I've uh, written as well, or that I've read. I don't know why I keep saying written, guys. I'm not, I'm not out here writing a bunch of books. Okay, just one more, and that's probably it. All right, post content that relates to your audience. And we're going to talk briefly about um, what to post and stuff like that as well. Um, balance personal, business, education, and entertainment content. Now, education and entertainment, that's actually the same category because as an educator, uh, one thing that I try to teach other educators or you know aspiring leaders is that we don't just educate, we have to educate and entertain and that's like a whole nother lesson a whole nother topic that's outside of this lesson but just know education and entertainment is one and then business and personal is another and i've even got some numbers for you okay so this is what i strive for um i don't always hit the mark because i'm not trying to do it that way but in a general sense what i try to post for people outside of my team is education and entertainment 70 percent so 20% of that's going to be personal and then 10% for business. And the reason for that is you don't want to like overdo business, but you also don't want to ignore it either. Okay. And I even went as far as putting a little pie chart for you guys. So hopefully you guys can appreciate that. But this is what I strive for again for my social media and what it is that, that I post. Yeah, David, I, I have. I, I mean, I, I I make PowerPoints and I read books and I take notes. So I've it, this this stuff to me is nothing, right? You never work a day in your life if you do what you love. You know what I mean? All right, connecting with everyone on social media. All right, this is how we do it visually, or this is how you can do it visually. You show insight to your personal and professional life. You know your routine, activities, hobbies. Uh, house events, stuff like that, restaurants, church, whatever the case. Again, most of you guys do this very well. Um, you know, you're you're transparent. That's what people want to see. People keep begging that of me. Show me what it's like to be, a, you know, an at-home trader. Show me, bro, my life's boring, okay? I, I love trading, but to most people, it's boring, okay? I just wake up and I trade, bro. Like, you know what I mean? But for everyone else, okay, you know, that are going outside and interacting with the world, people want to see that. Okay. And so they want to see that. That's how you can connect visually. You can connect emotionally by never appearing too perfect and too serious. Sometimes I do get a little serious. Most of the time I'm not, but people relate easily with struggles and adversity, right? And, and not to go too far down the rabbit hole trail, but we all know most people live in a matrix. They work jobs, they, you know, are broke or whatever the case. And a lot of people do struggle and a lot of people do have a lot of adversity. So when you talk about your struggles and adversity, that's an easy way to relate to people, right? If you're, if you, if you're too far above people, oh, look at my success, look at what I can do, this, that, the third, you're going to create that, that gap between how people live and your success. And that gap is not how you connect. Okay. Uh, talk about your past struggles and how you overcame them. A little bit of motivation as well. All right. And then intellectually educate, entertain, provide value, but don't overdo it. Okay. Don't overdo it. And then I would have added verbally in here, but honestly, with social media, you pretty much got to be verbal in all of these things, uh, especially when you're making reels and stuff. So that's not in here, but 
verbally or verbal connection is, is how we do all of those things. All right, connecting with your team. Here are some, some things that I need to work on moving forward that I haven't been doing. And I'm gonna share these with you, okay? So use people's names. I try to do this on stream when someone asks a question. Uh, if their name isn't something like ridiculous, I'll, I'll try to use their name like, oh, Tim asks, what is an institutional candle? And then I'll try to answer that because I want to connect to my people. All right. Same thing. Use people's names. According to Dale Carnegie, right? People's names is the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Participate in goal setting. This is something that I did in my telegram. I think it was last week uh, to set some goals for everybody to strive for. And that is to uh, essentially to challenge people to grow and achieve wins together, right? When you're winning together, you're connecting with the team and they're connecting with each other. I do love hearing my name when people are when, when pronounced properly. Yeah. And David's good at, at uh at doing this that's good i'm not that's why i'm working on it that's why that's why we gotta work on it and have a discussion all right uh here's a big one especially if you feel burnt out or if you feel like there, there's not enough time in the day this is something that i had to learn from john maxwell and i had to learn a lot through trial and error is to give your time to whoever earns it and the biggest thing with that is that not everyone deserves your time and i know as a leader doing that like the very first time it feels counterproductive. It's like, well, I want to give everybody my time. You, and, and we can all kind of tell who deserves your time and, and who doesn't. And uh, I got a slide for that too. So, all right, <laughs> criticize without hurting. So basically what that means is constructive, not deconstructive criticism. When you're giving someone criticism, remember it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Offer encouragement. Um, a lot of people, you know, they 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 don't get a lot of encouragement in their life. I know as a, as a kid growing up and even the Navy, I didn't get a lot of encouragement from people. Okay. As a child, yeah, oh, well, I don't remember my childhood that much, but a, as children and as um, teenagers, they, you know, deserve encouragement. They should be provided encouragement more than anyone else. Okay. And so, you know, our team members and even ourselves, everybody, everybody needs encouragement, right? Because we all have struggles. We all have things that we deal with. And when people don't hear encouragement, it's very hard to really encourage yourself, right? Self-talk is kind of, you know, its own topic and everything. But like, I don't know about you guys, but when someone I look up to is like, you know, John, come on, man, you're, you're, you're a badass, you know, like you do da, 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 da. like pick it up, right? That gives me energy and inspires me to keep going, right? So it's the same thing. You have to encourage your team, you know, your people to keep going because everyone faces struggles, but not everybody talks about it, right? Like you guys are going through some, I don't know what it is, but if you need, if you need encouragement, then provide that to your team who needs it. Know what I'm saying? Last uh, but not least is ask questions. When you ask questions, it shows that you're interested in them and it sparks ideas, right? I make other people come to their own solutions by asking them questions. John, I'd like to wake up on time. And I ask them, okay, well, what time do you go to bed, right? So it gets them to think about, oh, well, shit, I go to bed too late. I'm trying to wake up too early. Okay, well, maybe I should go to bed earlier. I make that their idea, but I got to ask them good questions. All right. Connecting with other leaders. Number one is you have to make connecting a priority. Um, more we and less me. And I know this was something that in the very beginning of my journey with Trade House, this is not really something that I wanted to do. I didn't want to like teach other teams and stuff like that. Uh, you know, that whole smart money conversation. We're not going to get into it, but it was just something that I didn't want to do. I was more like, no, let's, you know, in-house, more of our team. Like, you know, fuck them. That was kind of like my idea um, or, or my thought process. And it was wrong. Okay. It was very wrong. So we have to think more of we 
and less of me. This is probably a hard one, uh, but you have to take initiative. Sometimes you have to go first. All right, sometimes you have to go first. You can't always wait around for everybody because if you wait around, you're going to be waiting forever. Just reach out to them or whatever the case, but you got to take the first step. And going first wouldn't be such a bad idea if people didn't leave each other on red for like a couple months. You know what I mean? So we're fixing everything at a time here. <laughs> all right, it's all inter connected all right pun highly intended all right be more personal uh, this is something that i also learned from christian was uh using voice notes instead of text now sometimes when i get a voice note that's like a minute long i'm like ah fuck i don't i don't want to listen to that it's a long time all right but if you're connecting with other leaders or connecting with someone for the first time it is a little bit more personal to use a voice note instead of text so they get to hear your voice and go from there. All right. Punctuality. Wink, wink. Punctuality. All right. Show up on time. Now, this is a military lesson. Calling works best is something you're good at. But yeah, because I'm home all day. <laughs> but yes, I like I like calling. It's, it's easier uh, than texting. There's a lot of miscommunication when we text. As a matter of fact, real quick, sidebar. A uh, student of mine, I was supposed to get with her at, uh, she told me 5.30 last night. And then tonight she said, all right, 5.30. Now we end up not doing a call because she said 5.30, but she called me at 4.30 because it was 5.30 her time, not my time. So she made the mistake of not saying 5.30 EST. I made the mistake of not clarifying was that 5.30 her time or my time. So we both fucked up. And the result of that is we didn't get to call until way later. All right. Um, real world example. Okay. But anyways, uh, back to what I was saying about punctuality is showing up on time. So here's the thing. Notice how I put the punctuality showing up on time under the slide of connecting with other leaders. Okay. Connecting with other leaders. So in the military, you cannot be late to anything. Like you, like you cannot, like you have to be on time. Okay. And so the, the way that the military does it is that you're supposed to be there early. So there's a saying early is on time. On time is late. Okay. So showing up 15 minutes prior to your zoom call, 10 minutes prior to your zoom call. Okay. That's when you should be there now events and stuff. I know people, you know, walk in fashionably late and all that bullshit, but outside of the Again, outside of this conversation, but when connecting with other leaders, show up on time. Be early. Okay. Organization, scheduling, and preparation. Most of us are pretty good um, with that already. But for completeness sake, I wanted to put that in here. All right. Detail oriented, ask necessary questions and never assume. Again, today, that miscommunication, I assumed I didn't ask the right question. That was on me. All right. So if if there if we lack clarity, okay, we have to ask the, the proper question. I asked that question earlier in the chat. What time are we starting today? Just to make sure that we all knew that it was 7 p.m. Okay. Because I didn't want to assume. All right. Uh, so moving on to how to tell if someone is connected to the community. Uh, someone's connected to the community, you'll know this by uh, they will show Discord participation, they will ask questions and sometimes answer other students' questions if they can. Uh, they'll talk with us in the voice chats, they will interact with other students, they will attend and participate. So notice it's not just attend, it's attendance and participation in the Zoom calls. And uh, the biggest thing and the most obvious thing is showing appreciation by social media posts, uh, messages, uh, word of mouth, and stuff like that. Okay, so when people do that, you know that they have a good connection to the community because they're proud, right? They're proud to, to be a part of Trade House, to claim, you know, the Trade House and to plant their flag here at Trade House. You know what I'm saying? Protect the house, okay? Fix toxic atti attitudes and promote positive values. Now, I only throw this in here only because a couple of you guys know a certain individual that's in a discord this uh, situation i'm pretty sure is handled but you know one thing that i wanted to mention is that 
if if stuff goes down, if people are doing things, and I'm not going to name any names because I'm I'm sure we can all kind of figure it out. But you know, if people are hurting the trade house name or promoting things outside of the trade house that still deal with trading and stuff like that, that's not protecting the house. That is hurting the house. And if we allow that to continue, that means that we essentially accept that behavior. And it's not acceptable. If it's not promoting trade house in a positive way, that needs to be fixed immediately. Okay. So I hope that was crystal clear for you guys. How to tell if someone is growing personally and intellectually. They will display a mindset for growth. And this is, again, the this kind of comes back to who am I going to give my time to? I'm going to give my time to people like this. They display a mindset for growth. They're setting goals for themselves. They study and participate. Uh, they're showing you or me uh, the results that they're getting. Uh, they're sharing their journey. Oh, shit. Sorry. Um, and stuff like that. Okay. This is how I know that they're growing on a personal level and an intellectual level. So these are the people that I will help more than anyone else, right? If you're not willing to help yourself, I can't help you. But if you're helping yourself and you need help along the way, I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what I look for in someone who is asking for help or asking for extra time. All right, let's talk about retention. Uh, this is a list. It's a compare and contrast list. And uh, I'm not going to go over every single point. I'll kind of just lay it out for you. But I want to break down a little bit about uh, the people who stay and the people who leave. Okay, so people who stay feel connected to the community. People who leave feel disconnected to the community. People who stay believe in the vision. People who leave have little to no vision for themselves or for the trade house or for trading, whatever the case may be. People who stay are growing personally. People who leave are not growing personally. People who stay are growing intellectually. People who leave are not growing intellectually. People who stay typically have a growth mindset. People who leave, they lack a growth mindset. They're stuck in their ways. They're stuck in their negativity or old habits, whatever the case may be. People who stay have clarity. People who leave are confused. Okay. That's probably a big one. People who stay have clarity, right? If I ask Chad or some of these other people that are in the, uh, the voice chats every single time, they have clarity. They know where they're going. They, you know, they have goals. They're, they're growing and all that shit. They're here and they're here to stay. They're not going anywhere. All right. People who leave are often confused. All right. People who stay, uh, they feel heard. This is a big one too. People who stay feel heard, right? Their messages are read. They have questions that get answered, so on and so forth. Um, they're looking for direction and they get it, right? People who leave, they feel ignored. They don't read my messages. I ask questions. Nobody gets back to me. Uh, people who stay feel appreciated. People who leave feel unappreciated. People who stay have realistic expectations. People who leave have unrealistic expectations. Again, I won't name any names. But we know of some people who left thinking that grass was greener on the other side. It wasn't. Right? They had unrealistic expectations. And again, we won't, we won't dive too much into it. Uh, people who stay are financially responsible. People who leave are financially irresponsible. One thing I wish I could teach as an educator is financial literacy. I wish I could. I wish I could tell people, bro, live below your means. Stop being a fucking idiot. You know, budget, this, that, and the third. But, you know, I can't. I'm not a financial advisor or nothing like that or whatever. But people who stay are typically financially responsible. People who leave are not. All right? And then uh, here's just a real quick reflection questions. Um, I'm not going to read this. You guys have it. This is really something that you should do on your own. It's just questions that we ask ourselves. So that way we can, you know, spend a couple minutes on it, maybe get some ideas on what we are doing right, maybe what we're doing wrong, right? Am I a good communicator? Am I a good connector? Am I connecting with people? Do I live the vision? You know? and all these things. 
in the very, this is the very last slide uh, of the conclusion. Okay. Connections matter. Every person matters. Connection with people on multiple levels, or excuse me, connect with people on multiple levels and show how much you care. Make connecting with others a priority. Make people feel included. And for the love of God, never ignore your people. Okay. Never ignore your people.